Garage. Welcome everyone to the third episode of the mini-series on automotive aerodynamics. Today we're looking at the second generation Toyota MR2. As some of you may know, the Toyota MR2 is one of my favorite cars. I have a first gen. And the second gen was basically the same design. The Toyota engineers just sort of rounded off some of the edges and moved more to a 90s style rather than the boxy 80s style. So my summer student Wayne performed some hydrogen bubble visualizations. We have here the centerline visualization without a rear wing. And uh, we're gonna talk about some of the changes when adding a rear wing, rear spoiler, what that does and uh, also talk about this notch back design which is really the calling card of the Toyota MR2. So you can see with the centerline visualization here uh, the flow moves smoothly along the hood and uh, windshield upper roof but then at the where the notch back starts the flow can no longer follow the body and it separates and in that notch back we get a recirculating region uh, which is fully separated. Now this again happened on the first generation MR2, it's going to happen on any car that has this very sharp notch back. And this is going to affect the flow downstream, it's going to affect the effectiveness of any spoiler or rear wing. So when we add the rear spoiler we're going to see if it's actually really being effective. And uh, we can see here uh, you know, a fully separated wake behind the car near the rear bumper and the taillights. And if we look at the general uh, angle of the flow over the car, we can see near the back that it's angled down. So this is bad for downforce. This means the car is going to be generating some lift. And we're going to see how this is affected by a rear spoiler. So we're zoomed in here at the back uh, with no rear spoiler. Just getting a closer look. And we do have some bubble reflection, but uh, if we look closely again, we can see that separated region, you know, above the the trunk or the engine bay is where that you know fully separated flow is recirculating, and then we also get a separation at the back of the vehicle, and just as normal, we get two recirculating bubbles there: one uh, clockwise, the upper one, and one counterclockwise, the lower one. And uh, as you can see, this is very unsteady and it really looks like the flow is being deflected downwards. So this car most likely suffers from high drag and high lift in its stock form. Let's see what happens when we add a rear spoiler. All right, so we have the uh, OEM rear spoiler uh, added here and uh, we don't have the center line flow, we just have the flow along the back here. We can see that the separated wake at the very, very back of the car near the bumper and the rear taillights is increased slightly, and it's also changed in nature. So the lower separation, which is the counterclockwise rotation, seems a bit larger now. Uh, it seems to be separating periodically. The upper one, because of the influence of the spoiler, has moved upwards and has changed. It's a little bit smaller. Um, but again, we can see that the general nature is pulling the flow upwards, trying to generate some downforce, and most likely the drag hasn't changed too much, but let's take a closer look. All right, so now we're zoomed out. We have the flow from upstream going along the center line, and we also have the flow in the separated wake. And uh, let's just take a look at this, and then we'll compare them side by side. But uh, you can see that the flow is you know, being pulled underneath the rear spoiler. It's changing the structure of the rear wake and uh, the flow over the top of the vehicle has been deflected upwards. So overall the general size of the wake hasn't really changed too much. Uh, because of that notch back design the, full, the flow is fully separated there anyway. So this rear spoiler basically what it's doing is it's uh, increasing your downforce. But let's compare them side by side here. So here we have them compared side by side. The left is with no spoiler and the right is with a spoiler. If we look at the high speed outer stream above the car, uh, it does appear that the right side with the spoiler is deflected up a little bit. But the main change you know, right away is the separated wake behind the car near the rear bumper and the rear taillights. The, the change is quite drastic. The spoiler pulls everything up a little bit. And, and changes the, the nature of that separation. 
It also looks like it moves some of the separation away from the bumper, so the cores of those recirculations look a little bit further away, and this is going to decrease your drag. Uh, so most likely adding the rear OEM spoiler is going to decrease your drag a little bit and also increase your downforce. So it is recommended. Um, the other thing here is when you look at the car with no spoiler, the rear, rear bumper line and the rear trunk lid is very rounded. It doesn't have a well-defined separation point. It's not doesn't have a nice sharp edge. And this is bad for aerodynamics because it increases the uh, changing nature of the flow over time. So it's very unstable, it's very unsteady. What we want is a nice sharp separated edge um, to really fix the flow and that's what that spoiler is going to do. It's going to create a nice edge where the flow is going to always separate and increase the steadiness of that flow so you have less buffeting at high speed. Just a final video here. This is with pulsed hydrogen bubbles. So it just goes to show the change in speed over the vehicle at certain locations. You can see that the sheet of bubbles doesn't remain as a, as a rectangle. It actually deforms and this is because different areas of the flow are moving faster than others as it travels over the vehicle and especially near the surface of the vehicle. So when the flow moves over the hood and upper roof, it's accelerated and then when it moves near the back of the vehicle, it separates and slows down and you can really see here this high speed external stream doesn't even move into the wake. It, it can't follow the lines of the car. And so that's really the, the calling card of this Toyota MR2 notchback design. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Next up is the uh, third generation RX-7. Stay tuned.